Hi everyone, Creveen here from CIT's Blackrock Castle Observatory. In this video, we are starting at just half 11 looking into the south. By half 11, Jupiter and Saturn have already risen in the southeast. The moon is quite low over towards the west and we are still in summertime. So there is still an orange yellow glow over to the west northwest. It's already dark enough for many familiar constellations to be visible. Shapes like Scorpius there, low to the south, Virgo in the southwest, and Leo behind the moon. We also have Arcturus in Buetes, higher in the southwest. We've got Hercules and then Aphuicus and Serpens above Scorpius in the south. If you'd like to learn more about these constellations and other interesting topics about the stars and planets, then make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel using the red subscribe button and make sure to click the blue bell icon to get all of the most up-to-date notifications. These constellations are visible on both sides of the equator. However, if we turn around and look into the north, these constellations are only visible here in the north. Shapes like Ursa Major with the plough, the North Star in Ursa Minor and Cassiopeia, those are visible for us in the north, but they're not visible down south. Of course, south of the equator at the moment, they are in winter time. So the sun is at its lowest during the day. Here in the summer, our sun is nice and high. The opposite effect occurs at nighttime. We're seeing Scorpius and Virgo here quite low in the sky, along with the planets Saturn and Jupiter. Although the ecliptic, where we see the sun, is high during the day in the summer, it's low at nighttime in the summer. In wintertime, it's the opposite, and we'll be able to see that by taking a look down south. Many of the constellations in the southern hemisphere aren't visible to us here in the north, and many of them are very clearly different to the pictures we see. Luckily, it's nice and easy in Stellarium to visit the south without even leaving your seat. Here is our map of the world with our little red arrow right there in the south of Ireland in Cork. We're 52 degrees north. If we go just as far south, which in Stellarium is as easy as changing the N to an S, well, we'll end up in the very middle of the Atlantic Ocean. We'll still get a very similar view of stars that are in the sky, but I'd rather have my feet on dry land. Of course, there is not much land this far south. The best we can do is hop over to Chile and Argentina. If we go 70 degrees west, we'll be just inside Chile, just over the border from Argentina in an area known as San Gregario. So this is our view of the southern sky. Still looking south, no sign of Scorpius anymore, although we do have Sirius, the brightest star, over in the west. Nice and high in the south, we can already see this little, maybe a diamond shape, maybe a cross shape. I will get back to that in a second. If we turn around towards the north, this is where we should be seeing the familiar shapes. Shapes that are visible in the south of our sky are still visible in the north of the southern hemisphere's sky. And there are some familiar shapes here. This is Leo. There's the tail and the front of Leo curving up into the sickle. It looks upside down because we are looking at it from the other side of the sky. I mentioned that here in the north, our zodiacal constellations, the ones along the ecliptic, they're low in the summer sky, but high in the winter sky. We are looking at winter here down south, so nice and high there is our shape of Scorpius. It looks much, much longer because we can see the part of Scorpius that's below the horizon for us here in the north. It's quite high in the sky if you're down south. These pictures can be hard to spot because they're well, they're upside down. Luckily, we can bring up the images of the constellations. And there we go, there's our familiar shapes. There's Arcturus in Buetes. We've got Aphuicus and Serpent, Scorpius and Libra. The moon is still in Leo, Jupiter and Saturn. They're just rising here, but they're still in Sagittarius and Capricorn. The planets will still rise in the east and set in the west, but they'll pass across the northern sky instead of passing across the southern sky as they would for us here in the north. Turning back around to the south, 
Well, here's the constellations that we don't get to see, and already there are some major differences. These constellations weren't created by the ancient Greeks, but by explorers in the 17th century. So various things that weren't available to the ancient Greeks, like magnetic compasses, gas lamps, mechanical clocks, these are all used down south. We've even got a microscope down there in the corner. Definitely not something the ancient Greeks had access to, but an important piece of science in the 17th century. We've got animals here that the ancient Greeks didn't know about. Toucans and birds of paradise, chameleons, flying fish, a dorado, which is a fish we see in the southern hemisphere. There's also some things that the ancient Greeks simply never discovered. This is Uluru, also known as Ayers Rock, which is a pri prominent geographical feature in Australia. We've also got an image of a Native American Indian in a feathered headdress, not something the ancient Greeks would have ever run across, but well known to explorers in the 17 and 1800s, which is when many of these constellations were created. There, in the top of the south, is our little southern cross. Just like the constellations here in the northern hemisphere, some of these are easier to imagine than others. But they are created the same way. Bright, prominent stars in the sky were joined together by lines, and then those lines were used to make images. So we have our little cross shape here, we have a little triangle here, if we bring up the lines, there's our triangle, there's our cross. Some of the other lines are tough to imagine, similar to the ones we have here in the north. For example, this is meant to be the flying fish. If we bring up the images, our triangle is a triangle, our cross is a cross, but some of the other shapes, they are still hard to imagine. It's hard to tell that this line is meant to be a chameleon, while this line is meant to be a bird of paradise. But many of the constellations are tough to imagine, Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere, and we can see those in the sky here. If we start moving through the night, well, here in the north, we would see the North Star staying in one place. Down south, there isn't really an equivalent. There isn't one bright star that's visible in the center of the sky. Instead, the Southern Cross, it almost works as a hybrid between the North Star and the Plow. The North Star is part of Ursa Minor, very close to the center of the sky, whereas the Plow, it points towards the North Star. The Southern Cross is a small constellation close to the center of the sky, like Ursa Minor, but like the Plow, it's not exactly in the center of the sky, it points you to it. By following the long end of the Southern Cross, you reach the southernmost point in the southern sky, just there. This is very similar to what happens on many other planets. We're lucky here on Earth that our North Pole points directly at a star. On many planets, that simply isn't the case. There isn't an equivalent North Star and there isn't an equivalent Southern Star here on Earth. It's more an empty patch of the sky that everything appears to rotate around. Here, we're still looking at the sky as it would appear from a city like Cork with plenty of light pollution. But in this area of Chile, there's not too many large cities. It is more rural. So we can take away this glow of light pollution to see a lovely dark sky in the Southern Hemisphere. So here in the North, Cassiopeia has the uh, Milky Way arcing through it. Down South, we can see the Milky Way coming through the Southern Cross and the constellation of the Centaur. Just like in the Northern Hemisphere, we've got Scorpius and Sagittarius right there around the center of the Milky Way. We're seeing the center of the Milky Way here towards the east, almost towards the northeast, whereas in the Northern Hemisphere, it will be visible more to the south. If you're much closer to the equator, this lovely glow center of our galaxy can be much, much higher in the sky. Just skirting the horizon as it is here, that's more for locations like Ireland and the very bottom of Chile and Argentina, areas that are closer to the Arctic Circle will see the center of the Milky Way more along the horizon. If you're closer to the equator, it'll seem to pass closer to the middle of the sky. Because it's nice and dark, there are a couple of deep sky objects visible. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, we can just about see the Andromeda Galaxy, a little globe towards the north from our perspective. Here, looking into the south, we can see two glowing shapes, and they're much more obvious than the glowing shape of Andromeda, 
And that's mainly because they're much, much closer. They are also much smaller than Andromeda. These aren't full galaxies, but dwarf galaxies, companion galaxies that are orbiting around our Milky Way. The larger one is the Large Magellanic Cloud. The smaller one is the Small Magellanic Cloud. And these are named after the explorer Magellan who circumnavigated the globe. These dwarf galaxies orbit our Milky Way. They're our companion galaxies, a bit bigger and a bit more irregular than the globular clusters we can see. Of course, down south, there are just as many deep sky objects. There's our label for the small Magellanic Cloud. And if we zoom in, we should get a label for, there we go, well, it should say the large Magellanic Cloud. It might be too big to get such a label. We've got plenty visible down here, just as there's plenty visible in the north, but they are different things. These are objects that we can see from the north simply because of the Earth getting in the way. It is, of course, the middle of winter here in the southern hemisphere, and I think I'm ready to come back up to the north. Luckily, it's nice and easy. In Solarium, you can save a default location, and the default for this solarium is right back in Cork City. So here we are, we've still taken away the light pollution, so we'll bring ourselves back to Cork with all of the light pollution that we really have, and we'll be back to our familiar sky with Scorpius the right way up, the way we're familiar with, and Saturn and Jupiter just rising over in the southeast. So even if you can't make the journey all the way to the southern hemisphere, I hope you get the chance to look at the constellations that are visible for us here in the north.